Moses and the Bronze Snake Do you know what the deadliest snake in the world is? If you don't, I'll tell you later. In the story today, the Israelites are again complaining, but this time it's different. They are openly complaining about the Lord as well as Moses, and not just about food or water, but about the lack of both. They even call the food from heaven miserable. How ungrateful. This is the food that has kept them alive for some time. Once again, they say, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the desert? The Lord has been very merciful and forgiving towards them, right up to this time. But they have now crossed the line and God is going to punish them. He has to teach them a lesson. He sends poisonous snakes amongst them and many of the people die. Now they realise that they have sinned badly. And so they are sorry and they ask Moses to pray to the Lord to take away the snakes. God tells Moses to make a snake and put it on a pole. Moses makes a snake out of bronze and obeys. God says that if anyone is bitten, all they have to do is look at the bronze snake and they will live. Once again, God is merciful and forgiving. So do you know which is the deadliest snake? The worst snake by far was the one that came into the Garden of Eden and tempted Adam and Eve to eat the fruit that God had told them not to. The moment they disobeyed and ate the fruit, the dreadful venom of the snake began to kill them. It would take many years, but one day they would surely die. And not just Adam and Eve, but all their children after them, right up to this present time. The deadly venom is sin. We are all infected with it, even from birth. In the New Testament part of the Bible, in the book of John, Jesus says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. There was nothing magical about the bronze snake. If the people looked at it, as God told them to, it would show God that they were trusting and obeying him for a change, so they would be healed. And the same goes for us. If we obey and look to Christ, raised up on that cruel cross, trusting that he really can and will forgive us our sins by his death, we can be healed of the awful venom of sin and one day go to be with God forever in heaven. We have a choice. We can be like the Israelites, forever complaining, and not trusting God and have the deadly poison still inside. Or we can trust God and his wonderful son and be healed. Now what are you going to choose?